What's up, what's up everyone, it's Gaishin Gamer here, back with episode 3 of Mid Gaming Kings Ray 2021, and today we'll be discussing the Shadow of Agena as well as Shockmei. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. Alrighty guys, so chances are if you've defeated chapter 9-23 that you went ahead and uh, it kind of highlighted that you opened up this new area of the map um, upon beating the chapter, and that is the Shadow of Agena. And then once you go through here, it'll actually take you to the beginning here, and you kind of have to go through some lore chapters, which you can just kind of auto through, really. Um, but it's they're actually decent videos, so I definitely kind of keep that in mind as you kind of go through it. But you might want to watch those the first time going through. You can always kind of go back and rewatch them if you want, but just something to keep in mind. But once you get to the end, you'll have something what most players like to refer to as Little Shock and Big Shock. And what these are, are these, these are bosses that you will have to kill the Little Shock uh, several times in order to get this gauge right here, as you can see it's 0% at the moment, but as you kill the boss, it kind of slowly climbs up to 100%, which then unlocks the Big Shock. And uh, we'll just kind of briefly discuss the, the bosses here, and we'll discuss, you know, tips and tricks and how to beat them. Alrighty, and first up here we have Devour Shockme, aka Little Shock. And just a few tips and tricks for Little Shocker. First off and foremost is you actually get a couple buffs when fighting him. One is the Path of the Sun increases lifesteal of melee heroes and damage dealt to Shockme. And the other is the Path of the Moon, or the Path of Shadow, I'm sorry, and increases max HP and heal rate of ranged heroes. So it's something to keep in mind when you're doing your little party composition that maybe if you're struggling to kill the boss, maybe you need to include more melee, but most likely you're failing because of some of the mechanics he has as well. So first and foremost, you just kind of want to note that Shockme is kind of gains uh, mana quite quickly. So it's actually best to take characters that actually decrease the amount of mana that Shockmay has. He'll have like a blue mana gauge that just, you know, quickly increases at the bottom there. But the more you can deplete that, the more damage you can deal because his block goes down as well as the amount of damage he'll take goes up. So it's important to bring characters that actually decrease mana in this boss, as well as, um, the CC gauge, if you're able to kind of, you know, CC him down and deplete his gauge, he'll actually um, take additional damage moving forward. But if you do so, he'll actually kind of come back a little bit more powerful. So just kind of keep that in mind. Another thing about this boss, he actually has six waves. So actually heroes like Rahartna are super good for it because she's got super long sustain as well as she gets a lot out of her, you know, S4 uh, uh, yeah, S4 with the um, six waves and kind of getting full utilization if you take that transcendence perk to make it go up to six. So just kind of something to keep in mind. So yeah, without further ado, I think that kind of covers it for the most part about shock and things to watch out for. And uh, as you kind of go through, one thing you also want to keep in mind, especially as a newer player, if you go into shock man you're unable to kill the stages i'd kind of just go by one by one and get to the point where you can kind of max out but as you kind of you develop your account especially in the beginning you're going to be gaining power quite drastically so at the most i would probably do three entries a day because you'll actually recover three entries every day as well and then once you get to a point where you're comfortable you know um and you kind of maxed out for a while maybe you'd then consider you know using all of your helmets up here uh as you can see that's the entries that you have to to fight the boss and then kind of max that out and then go into the otherworldly devourer shock may so just something to consider so without further ado we'll jump into the other shot the big shock Alrighty, guys real quickly uh, i actually made a mistake on the first part here um when talking about little shock and it's not actually her perk that increases her stacks up to six on her s4 it's actually the dragon drawing so this is actually the best unique treasure for good old rahartna here and i'd recommend picking this up especially if you're trying to do shock as you can see it increases the max stacks to six as well as it increases boss damage by three percent stacking so it's quite nice especially if, uh, when you're stacking 18 percent damage on shock may and that kind of goes up uh the more stars you have on as well so it's really nice um also consider up picking up this uh, battle march perk which it also gives uh crit damage of all allies up by 12 percent per stack as well so yeah you kind of want to double up with those two things and uh, it'll make your shock journey just that much easier
Alrighty guys, and as you can see, we farmed up to 100% up the top here uh, from doing little shock. We got about maybe 5% every three runs, just for some frame of reference. And also for your newer players out there, just a heads up, it's a great way to farm gold, especially in the beginning. because um, And that's the resource that I'd recommend you choosing. Uh, this one also, as you can see, it lets us choose from three options down here. Little shock allows you to choose from even more options, but I'd recommend gold for most newer players because uh, it's just such a valuable resource at the beginning. All right, so now, as you can see, we're at the Otherworldly Darkness Shock Mat, a.k.a. Big Shock. And uh, what we'll do here is uh, we'll just kind of briefly go through. He's very similar to Little Shock in many aspects. The one big difference is, is that your team's actually going to get split up into two, uh, and actually you can only use certain characters certain places. So as you can see, I get ready for battle. We have the Path of the, the uh, Sun here, as well as the Path of the Shadow. And... Um, it's only going to let me use the melee characters in the top row here, and um, it'll only allow me to choose like the ranged heroes for the bottom row here. So I would recommend um, just be careful with your party composition, and you also still have the same buffs um, from the first one, it, the exact same ones where the Path of the Sun will increase lifesteal and damage to shock me, as well as the Path of the Shadows uh, increases max HP and heal rate of ranged heroes, just for a heads up. So... This is just something I run with. I recommend a lot of CC uh, and also mana reduction. Uh, it's pretty much the exact same composition that you run for Little Shock. It's just that your heroes are separated and it's like, going to add a couple mechanics into it um, that you'll just kind of want to keep aware of. Real quickly, we'll cover the uh, mechanics that you need to keep aware of. Is um, One of them is the Storm of Hatred, um, in which this creates like an AoE on the Path of the Sun side that's going to disable lifesteal and just cause AoE damage. This is when you'll want to use your active ability on the light side and I'll show you down here below what that is. It's going to be the protection of the oasis for nine seconds heroes within the path of the sun take reduced damage have their attack increase become immune to negative effects and heal HP proportional to their max HP every second. So that just kind of nullifies that AOE so anytime he does that I would recommend using that ability. Um, another thing is is that he's just going to keep constantly gaining his CC bar um, or I'm sorry the mana and CC bar and then if you don't reduce that CC bar below 50% once once he gets to 66% health, he's actually going to one-shot your entire team. I'll kind of show you that mechanic right here. Is that, um, as you can see, um, the judgment, let's see, where is it? Oh, right here, Revenge of the Uncrowned. When Shock May's HP falls to 66% and 33%, he summons the Sword of Revenge, dispels positive effects from all enemies, and deals uh, physical damage. If correct power is at 50% or higher, he annihilates all enemies, enemies uh, aka he pretty much one-shots your entire team. So just kind of keep in mind that that will happen if you don't have enough CC. Uh, one way to get around that, though, is actually using the Wrath of the Desert, which is the ability on the Path of the Shadow side, but it just kind of affects both sides in a, in a way. Um, it not only gets rid of the shield that he creates, but it also reduces his mana, as well as um, the more times you use it, the more it's going to keep taking it down uh, each recurring usage thereafter. So something to keep in mind if you're kind of struggling, if you use it twice in one go, um, it will definitely help you out. So yeah, without further ado, we'll just kind of hop into it. Uh, just those are the kind of main things to look out for. And uh, yeah, I'll just kind of show you what I'm talking about as far as the active abilities and uh, just play, play through of Shock. Ready, and here we are. So something to keep in mind is that um, actually a lot of your Transcendence perks um, aren't really set up for shock. Uh, so just something to keep in mind of that a lot of your heroes actually have mana reducing perks. They're just not in the recommended perks. So you may, if you're kind of struggling with, you know, reducing his mana bar, it might be something to look into. It's just kind of taking a look at the perks and see, you know, what you might be able to change to help your shock may experience just that much better. So as you can see, I kind of just turned the, uh, the sh path of shadow on auto personally. Uh, they do just fine, but it's kind of the path of the sun that I worry about. He's doing his ability where he's disabling my lifesteal. I'm going to go ahead and use this top ability here. And what we'll do as well, as you can see, his mana is quite high right now. I'm just going to make sure, and his CC is below 50%, so we don't have to worry about getting annihilated right now, which is really great. And he's doing slightly reduced damage because the mana reduction. He just gained a bunch, so he's doing back uh, to more damage. Um, but my party's not really uh, optimal as far as reducing his mana, but it does the job just okay. Uh, when I kind of progress further in, the, in Big Shock, I'm definitely going to need to 
we reduce this mana moving forward. I'm only on stage two right now, so just something to keep in mind. If you're having troubles with damage that he's pushing out, you definitely need to reduce his mana bar because that gives him a, a lot of damage reduction as well as damage increased. Um, another thing to kind of keep in mind, I, I don't know why I'm skipping the annihilation phase right now, but at 66% and 33%, he should be like doing like an animation where he stops the combat and he goes to this thing where Kane protects you, like he swings a sword and Kane protects me. But if, if you didn't have his corruption bar below 50%, he would have just one shot your team. So something to keep in mind. And alrighty guys, and I just wanted to give you just a real quick example of what I was talking about as far as like the transcendence perk. As you can see, I open up the recommended perks. You see them right here. However, for Shockmay, they have slightly different perks that you're kind of wanting to use. As you can see right here um, for this ability, um, this transcendence perk here on the dark side grants each uh, hit reduces mana by 200 and that's definitely something that you want to look into for shock may and other abilities like that as well it's just an example of many so just something to look out for throughout your entire team just kind of look through maybe they have some mana reducing perks that you may want to use and they're not quite in the uh, recommended perks for pve um, also, one more thing I wanted to cover is Big Shock actually increases in power uh, on stages 3 and 5, so not something you necessarily have to worry about right away as you probably won't be doing those, um, but it's just something to keep in mind for uh, just kind of progressing forward in the game, as well as... Um, it doesn't actually matter if you fail, so you can actually try on some of the harder stages over and over and over again, and uh, it doesn't waste your try. You, it'll just keep, uh, you know, you be, keep being able to enter until you kill the boss, or if you fail to kill the boss, it'll just kind of be indefinite. So just something to keep in mind of. So I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. I hope you guys find this helpful. Um, but without further ado, I'm Gaijin Gamer, signing out.